58 seconds of Into the Logoverse. All right, let's do this one last time. Clever narration harkening back to almost every superhero reboot. Having to have an origin story is still f***ing narration, and it's still a f***ing origin story. So, double sins. I'm a comic book. I'm a serial. Did a Christmas album. At this point, can we make meta humor a sin? Because it feels like we should be able to. Also, why are the generic serials always ending with O's? Especially when Spidey Snacks, Spidey Flakes, and Spidey Grams are still on the table. Because the only thing standing between this city and oblivion is me. Frighteningly, roughly 11,000 New Yorkers say this to themselves every morning, including but not limited to the mayor, the DA, random aggressive cops, deluded artists, corrupt hot dog vendors, and Howard Stern. Sony Headphones is only the first of many Sony product placements in this otherwise artistically original film. Look, I get this is the style of animation that the movie is using to make it stand out, feel more authentically like a comic book or whatever, but that doesn't make it any less irritating that the first time I saw this, I spent 20 minutes of the movie trying to figure out if it was on purpose or if the theater employees were too busy jerking off in people's popcorn to pay attention attention to the presentation of the film. And even when I realized it was on purpose, I then spent 20 more minutes trying to figure out why my popcorn tasted a little extra salty. I want to hear it. You want to hear I me love say you, it. Dad. Hilarious moment, and it shows how much he loves Miles. But it also devastates Miles' reputation at this school. What is up with these cones in this unused closest lane? People are dropping kids off in lane two, outside the cones. Are we just shutting down lanes of traffic this morning because it goes near a school? This five seconds of montage alone should convince every American that we are putting too much pressure on our young students. Christ. I don't think I've seen you before. Since we find out this Gwen Stacy is from another universe, how exactly did she get into this prestigious private school? It doesn't factor in at all to her mission or reason for being there. Why would she even try to get in? Jesus Christ, is it possible to have too many references to Spider-Man in a Spider-Man movie? This movie is pointing a pretty big arrow to yes. Find that girl, we walk up to her and be like, hey. <laughs> you serious, Uncle Aaron? Do not do this. This is tragically bad advice. No, I can't, I can't. Character insists they won't, can't do a thing over and over only to ultimately do that very thin cliche. My biggest problem with this time lapse is that Miles' roommate apparently needs two PC screens, a separate laptop, and a phone, all operating at once, at like three in the morning. This guy is either mining Bitcoin or he's mining Bitcoin. I'm not going through puberty. I did, but I'm done. Movie was clearly spying on my middle school interactions with girls. I'm Gwenda. Why wouldn't she just say her name was Gwen, or whatever name she used to get into this school? Movie not being able to resist a moment, this sitcom -y deserves a sit. It's just puberty. Ugh. I don't think you know what puberty is. Gwenda would be excellent at cinema sins. Somehow, Miles' sticky spider hands rip a sticky spider hand-shaped amount of her hair off her head. And no one is going to question the stickiness of Miles' hands? I know why she isn't, but everyone else should be really curious about what's going on here. How exactly did he get all of Gwen's hair from the previous shot off of his hand? Narks. How is it possible that Gwen is the only one looking up at this moment to see this? Why is this happening? Please stop sticking. Convenient comic book page placement is convenient. Where did the Green Goblin even go? It's not as if Spider-Man incapacitated him. He just swung down to help Miles. Is that f***ing Tombstone? God, I love that this movie is bringing out these great underrated characters like Tombstone and the Prowler and putting them on the big screen for the first time. That deserves a sin off. Kingpin survives this. Get that thing ready to go again and so. King how? It was destroyed. It'd be faster to build a new one from scratch. Maybe turn the flashlight off. Look at the center lines of this road and then the cars parked along the right. There is no room for cars to drive in this lane, which means this street is too f***ing narrow or else all these cars are about to get towed for parking illegally. Also, there is a meats to eat on both sides of this street. NYCers must f***ing love them some meats to eat. Yeah, I think it's a Banksy. Banksy. Okay, I gotta read these comics so I can learn how to be a Spider-Man, so definitely the best place for that is a dark alley. Okay, look, if they buried Spider-Man in a public cemetery and they allowed people to visit it and drop off trinkets and flowers, then A, it would still be f***ing overrun with people since he literally just died. And B, there would be way the hell more trinkets and flowers here. She wanted kids and, and it scared me. As it f***ing should. Who knows what that spider DNA mixed with human DNA would give birth to. You could end up with Eric Stoltz in the fly too. This whole sequence is fun and neat to look at. I mean it, but it's just covering up a super dump of exposition. The snowman head was a good gag, but there's no way it would stay on this long. Not a costume. It was literally a ball of snow. They were just making fat jokes about his gut a minute ago, but now he looks pretty in shape. Actually, Lady Doc Ock is about to make some more jokes about his gut, but my point is that the movie draws the gut only when it needs it. Considering how many times Kingpin has had to go up against Spider-Man, I would think 
think Alchemex would have some exterior cameras pointing up to catch moments just like this. And I guess I would be wrong, but that doesn't make it any less stupid. Look at this data. Okay, just a second ago, this is how far above Kingpin the vent was. Then Miles bumps into Peter, Bob's your uncle, and now they're three times closer? Doctor and Mrs. Peripheral Vision here. Remember this password, capital D, G, F, A, M, P. That password is way longer than the one Liv typed in a second ago. And obviously you've been glitching. Glitching? No. Well, someone saw Wreck-It Ralph. Let me tell you the good news. We don't need the monitor. <laughs> They told me about the visuals, they told me about the voice work, they even told me about the fresh original story, but they did not prepare me for how funny this was gonna be. And that's a sin for they. Is there something you wanna say to me? How come he only ever glitches when it's super inconvenient or when he's talking about glitching? Oh, Who did that? Spider Gwen X Machina. I joined a band. Save my dad. Bruce Wayne, eat your heart out. Long after the dust has settled and the newness has worn off, people will still regard this film as fucking fantastic. But I personally will still be trying to point out to people how it's like 25% expositional character introductions, because I'm a dickhead. My spider sense told me to head to Visions Academy. <laughs> Wasn't sure why until I met you. But since Gwen was in the class Miles showed up late for, that means she was there before he was bitten by the spider. So why would her spider sense tell her to go there? Do these abilities spider sense destiny now? The flashbacks of Kingpin's loved ones, which is also just another rapid-fire exposition dump in a movie full of them, would get more emotions out of me if they dialed back a bit on the Kingpin is comically large and his head is located where most folks' sternums would be. I'm not sure how this action prevents Tombstone from still shooting the guns at Liv, since they're still clearly pointed at her. I mean, this place is pretentious. And also, just another Batcave. You might need these. If the other spider people have been here the whole time, then why is the spider sense just now lighting up? I just washed my hands. That's why they're wet. No other reason. Well, we finally got to a joke in this movie that falls completely flat for me. He might be a real canonical character, but this is like Popeye showing up in the middle of The Incredibles. Sometimes I let matches burn down to my fingertips just to feel something, anything. This noir Penny ham introduction sequence feels like one of those SNL sketches where they do celebrity impressions and give us fake auditions for famous movies. How did you get here? The hell? Same as you. Why are you asking this? Look, I made a promise, so I have to keep it. Promises to dead people aren't all that important, man. I promised my grandfather that I would never forget him, but I already don't remember his name. I think it was Grandpa. See, no one cares. Can you swing and flip with the grace of a trained dancer? Do your ears hang low? Do they wobble to and fro? Can you tie him in a knot? Can you tie him in a bow? Come on, Miles, get up. You need to be more honest with yourself about this. After a test that lasted less than two minutes? At least give him a day. Jesus. The one thing I will always never understand about these parallel dimension films is the insistence on having everything be the exact f***ing same, with maybe one word change. Like that red X truck in the background. Red X? Really? It's more likely that there's a FedEx in this universe than that there's a red X. In recreating the magic thumb drive that kills the Collider, the specifics of which this movie has yada yada to hell and back, they took the time to laser etch a spider logo on it. Because reasons. You gotta go, man. This movie rules, but literally everything in it is happening too fast. Despite the fact that Miles is wearing a cheap Halloween costume, it remains completely unshredded after he was dragged across a roof. No, Miles. I'm sorry. You're on your way. Just keep going. Does every incarnation of Spider-Man have to lose a beloved uncle? What about MJ? Well, that new documentary really did a number on his popularity. And honestly, oh, you meant Mary Jane, right? Well, several states have legalized it, and two dozen have made it legal for medicinal purposes. But there's still a long way to, oh, f you meant Mary Jane the person, didn't you? Fuck, I know how much you want this kid. All these spider dicks teaming up to prevent Miles from taking part in the climax because they want to protect him? Assholes. It took you long enough. It took you long enough, cliche. God damn, this movie has momentum and an understanding of comic books never before demonstrated by any movie adaptation that came before. This is a fun figuring out the power scene, but there is a timetable, right? You're telling me he's had time to get to Aunt May's, spray paint the suit, let it dry, and do this montage before they could get to the collider and send everyone home? Are they still taking the bus just for comedy now? Boy, they sure did clean up the mess of that last collider accident and build a new machine in a f***ing hurry. Like, two days? I think it was two days. That's so amazing I'm willing to call bullshit. They do this ceiling hiding trick a lot, and usually I let it go. But there's f***ing five of them, including a giant robot. And those ceilings aren't that high. There's zero chance Kingpin or the two guards didn't notice them before now. So we all realize that everyone in that building just got trans-dimensionalized and probably died a horrible, painful death. Just making sure everyone's good with that. This. This is kind of fun and all, but it's just Yoda fighting Dooku, right? One of the movie's only problems is sometimes leaving viewers with a bad case of what the f*** just happened itis. At some point, this movie just said, f*** you, logic and physics, and wants me to just roll with it. And for the most part, I can't. Still a sin, but it's a fun sin. I'd be sad if this girl and her robot were more than glorified cameo characters. I got the portal open. 
You first, Penny. But how do they know they will each go back to their own dimension? Miles letting go of Peter here after both have finally understood their purpose? It won't be, but that was the superhero moment. Not whatever ass-beating Miles does after this. Why would Vanessa and Richard start randomly appearing here? Like most superhero films, the final few minutes turn into one big animated ball of nonsense. As they fall through the... I guess a scene from inner space. Somehow Miles and his father are both still alive and both still in or on things that are intact and can both see each other from this distance while falling into purgatory. Hey Kingpin, push the green button for me. This works. Miles' dad survives this. Okay, let's do this one last time, yeah? For real this time. If we have to. Okay, but I remember that scene on the bus. They weren't buddy-buddy, they just met. They were just getting to know each other. He said, if you ever decide to do friends again, I could open up a slot. And she awkwardly replied, I'll keep you posted. Now, is that the kind of conversation that ends with one of them saying, let's take a selfie together? Possible cannibalism. Miles! Miles! You got a minute? What is happening? Is he remembering her? Is she calling to him from another dimension? It's Gwen's voice, but I feel like I should know what this means, and I don't. This movie rules, and everyone that worked on it deserves mention. But this movie has 10 minutes of credits. That's excessive, especially when the movie is going to put an after credit scene at the end. Apparently, some kind of transposition has taken place. I find it extremely interesting. Do you know how easy this is for me? I know why you left. Why, and I told you why. No, 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 you said it was because of the TV. But I don't believe that. I got some questions. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? Find that girl. You walk up to her and be like, How you doing? You'll kill us all! You're all going to die down here. If you don't tell me your name, I'm going to have to make one up. It's Diane Sawyer. Hello? I'm going to roll you into a little ball and shove you up my vagina. Uncle Aaron, this is my fault. Good job! Wait, what? 